Are you tired of listening to us talk? Well, yes. I don't blame you. So occasionally, we're going to ask you some questions. <laughs> Hi, my name is Russell Palswold, and I teach manufacturing technology at Clackamas Community College. We run students all the way through two-axis machining all the way up to five-axis machining. Uh, I'm sure I came across probably 24 hours of women's advertisement and from there it just kind of clicked. It was the endurance part that I loved from Baja racing but it's something I could afford and it's really become kind of an engineering problem that nobody asked to be solved um, for you know for myself particularly but our team overall and it just every year we kind of put a car together and every year we're trying to win IOE and we're doing that from a um, you know a perspective of this car hasn't raced in lemons before and it needs to you know we need to see how it goes you know lemons as a whole it is the most evolved and most gentlemanly type of racing that I've ever been involved in. I mean, to come in and be able to go and again, do your, you know, enjoy yourself and understand that if somebody does something unprofessional, that there are going to be repercussions. And to feel that kind of confidence and security in the uh, sanctioning body is a huge thing for me. Racing is you against yourself out there trying to do something that nobody else has done. And that's, uh, and I get that from Lemons. And I really appreciate that uh, uh, we're able to do this. The car that we're currently racing is Her Majesty, which is a mid-engine 1958 uh, Jaguar Mark I that has a 93 Jaguar XJ6 drivetrain in it. That was a twofer car which means you buy one car and you get one free. And with most Jaguars, that's what you end up with is you end up going to buy one car and you end up with two of them because every Jaguar owner has a parts car. And so when I built Her Majesty and I decided to make it 50-50, I just kind of threw the drivetrain in it and weighed the car and said, it's got to go back a little bit further. And I just moved it back until it kind of fit within the frame and left me enough room to steer and it ended up in the passenger compartment and that's just where the weights told me to put it it has a custom doghouse in it and um you know that car was a labor of love we'd shown up at the race late and we ended up winning organizer's choice for that race and my wife accepted it and uh you know there's this moment where it went from, you know, I was happy we didn't catch fire. I was happy that nobody got hurt. I was happy that the car was still in one piece, but then it just like ramped up to a different level because we weren't expecting it at all. And to um, to get that acknowledgement was really, um, you know, it's, it's one of the biggest wins we've had in, in Lemons. You know, the only thing that I really regret about that car is that I didn't time manage better and therefore give my team um, more laps and more investment. I should have spent a little more time on um, the important stuff, which is getting, you know, get to the track on time, enter the race when it starts, you know, those those kind of things. And, uh, and that's really the other side of the story as far as that car is concerned. I think I'd go and I'd buy some of Ed Roth's cars or have Ed Roth cars built uh, for me. And uh, again, we're talking about like the Beatnik Bandit or the Mysterion or Orbitron and then trying to get those through Lemons Tech. When we when we talk about like building the car, I'm not talking about building something that looks like the Beatnik Bandit. I'm talking about, if we're talking about unlimited budget, the Beatnik Bandit but passing Lemons Tech. Well, thanks everybody. Hoping you the best and I'll see you guys out on track.
Yeah. <laughs> Was. <laughs> I I mostly welded it.